Welcome to another Q&A. Today, we're actually going to be doing it a little bit differently because I'm going to be answering questions from my Discord server. If you would like to join the Discord server, I apologize, but you'll have to come and catch one of my streams sometime on twitch.tv slash That's just because I don't like to leave Discord links in YouTube descriptions because it, it does tend to bring in a lot of spam. But without further ado, let's get right into those questions. From Tundra Wolf. What are your best and worst con experiences? I've told the story of my number one worst experience before. All right, we're here, just sitting in the car. I want you to show me if you can get far. Step on the gas. Step on the gas. Step on the brakes. So besides that, my worst con experience would be, hmm. I don't know, I just have such amazing times at cons, it's really hard for me to think of the bad times. Well, that or I'm just really good at nuking bad experiences from my brain. Hmm. Ooh, 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 I know. One year at Ferdu, Kiba and I were in our hotel room getting ready to head down to the con space. And like, Kiba was just holding the door open a tiny bit while I put my shoes on. As I was doing so, a full fursuit walked on past heading towards the elevators. And little did I know at the time, that this was in fact not a fursuiter, but a biohazard with legs. The mustiest, moldiest, nose-burningly grossest odor wafted into our hotel room and completely assaulted our sinuses. The door was only opened by about a foot. And that was enough to have us gagging, like, I'm feeling gross just remembering. That, that kind of smell never leaves you. The stench permeated through the hallway and never really left for the duration of the con. I was, and still am, absolutely baffled. Like, how on earth do you make a fursuit smell that bad? You know what, don't answer that, I don't want to know. I don't think I could deliberately get a fursuit to smell that way, let alone be okay with that being my fursuit's normal smell. Like, I'm all for fursuit in your way. Like, you own the suit, you have the right to do whatever you want. But when your mere existence turns an entire hotel room floor into a chemical war zone, we have problems. There is something very wrong going on. Oh boy. Alright, let me, let me bleach my brain with the best con experience that I've had. It would probably have to be the meet that we did at MFF 2018. Most of my audience is from the USA, so it was amazing finally getting to meet so many of you face to face. I was completely blown away by just how many of you guys showed up. Like, we had a full-on line going around and through that fishbowl area. You were all so lovely and you told me so many incredible stories about what my content has done for you. Like, I, I, I cried a lot. Well, not that you could see under my fursuit head. Mwah. So whenever I begin to doubt myself, I just remember back to that meet to remind me of why I do what I do. I cannot wait for the pandemic to be over so I can come on back. From Winter Wonderland Studios. If you were given the chance to get a fursuit from any maker for free, what fursuit maker would you choose and what persona would you get made? Okay, okay, I have an idea. I would love to get my Cerberus character Senka made, but have three different makers do it. I'd probably pick the body and middle head to be made by Triple C Costumes, the green head to be made by Booty of the Base, and the purple head to be made by Naz FX Studios. I think each of those makers' styles suits each respective head's personality perfect, and having that contrast would look absolutely incredible. I have no idea how it would work, or even if the makers would be open to something like this. Plus, I will never ever ever have the budget for a project this big. but. It sure would be freaking legendary. <laughs> From Scourge12 Hey Pikari, have any tips for writing a Persona backstory? I'm trying to come up with one for mine, but I have no idea how. I've also had a lot of trouble with this, but I find it gets a lot easier once you establish what sort of world that your Persona lives in. Is it a Zootopia-like society? Are they a mutant on the surface of a post-apocalyptic world? Or maybe it's an alternate Pokemon universe where all the trainers are fairies? It could be your own world you've made up, or maybe it's the world from your favourite movie, or your favourite book, or your favourite game, or all of the above. So decide where your persona lives, 
how they got there, and the rest of their backstory should flow a lot more naturally. From Luke Roo. Hi Fukari, what was the first ever games console you owned, and what is also your most favourite console you've played? Love your channel, and greetings from the United Kingdom. My first ever console was the PS2, back when they were super duper new, like we had one of the chonky boys. <laughs> it was such a good console, and my dad would always collect those PlayStation magazines that came with the demo discs, and when we got one of those, it was like Christmas, because there were just so many different games on them. Even though they were just demos and they usually kicked you out of the game after a few minutes, but we were very easily entertained children, so we just played them over and over and over. Ooh, we also had iToy. That was heaps of fun. Like, all our birthday parties were just devolved into iToy parties. It was great. <laughs> As for my favourite console, I mean, I have been enjoying the Switch a lot, but I'm gonna have to say the Wii, just because I have so many great memories attached to it. It was the first console that I ever bought with my own money, which was raised by busking with my saxophone. <laughs> and it was my first non-handheld Nintendo console. Playing Wii Sports with the family, destroying my friends in Smash Bros Brawl, getting to see my Pokemon go from 2D to 3D in Pokemon Battle Revolution. Oh, so many good times. From Max. Hey Pikari, I don't watch much for a YouTube as usually I find it pretty cringe or adultish. You however, I love watching your content and I love your positive attitude. Thanks for making my days. Anyway, here's my question. Do you find wildlife interesting? Also, do you find reptiles in your yard slash neighborhood slash city? I'm a reptile enthusiast from the USA and I have a pet lizard native to Australia, not a bearded dragon. It's actually a blue tongue skink. Ah, thank you so much for the kind words. I, I do try my best to keep things PG and upbeat. Well, unless YouTube wants to keep disabling comments on my videos for no reason. Uh, I might have to start including a swear word at the beginning of every video. As for do I find wildlife interesting, Yes! Yes, 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 yes! Whether it's got fur, scales, feathers, an exoskeleton, and everything in between. I wanna see it! I wanna see it! And maybe poke it if it's not dangerous. If you invite me out to like a zoo or an aquarium or a walk through the wilderness, I will drop everything I'm doing to go. I also really love fishing because literally all I wanna do is catch a fish, look at it up close, inspect it, be like, yep, that's a fish, alright, and throw them back. I sort of have like a mental Pokedex going on where I just want to see as many creatures with my own eyes as possible. As for the reptiles here, yep, they are definitely not an uncommon sight. I live in a suburban area, so we really only see your standard skinks and house geckos. But if you're very lucky, you might get a visit from one of those blue tongue skinks that you mentioned. But we just call them blue tongues here. Sadly, they are rarer in the suburban areas just because there are a lot of irresponsible cat owners who let their cats stay outside for the entire day and night. And they definitely don't mind a munch on a blue tongue. Plus, a lot of dogs will also go after them if one wanders into their backyard. But yeah, all living things are awesome, and I could totally just sit here and nerd out about them for the rest of the video. But we do have some more questions to get to. From Moonstorm10, will you be playing in Art Fight this year? Sure am. This is actually my first Art Fight ever, and I am already having an incredible time. For those that don't know, Art Fight is an online event that happens every July. You join one of two teams, and you earn points for your team when you attack a user on the other team, which is done by making them some art. People's profiles list their characters, so you pick one, draw some art, submit your attack, and then you earn points based on its finish. Like a simple sketch with no colours will get you a couple of points, or a full-on animation that is fully shaded and features ten of their characters, that will get you a bajillion points. If someone attacks you, you can swear revenge and make some art for them in return. You can also do friendly fire and make some art for someone on your own team, but it doesn't net as many points. Either way, it is all in good fun. We're here just to enjoy getting to make artwork for others. I myself am on Team Cyberpunk, the correct team, under my username Adezu, and I've been streaming a lot of my attacks and revenges, so you should totally come on by sometime. Twitch.tv slash Picari From Storage. Hey Picari, quick question. If a suit doesn't look right, markings on the wrong place, or on the wrong limbs, etc., or doesn't fit, can you return or tell the maker about it? Or can you ask them to remake or redesign the suit? All of the above seem a bit daring, but I'm just wondering. Thanks for introducing me to the fandom, I hope to make you art sometime. Greetings from Ireland, from Mishmash the Wolf Goat. This depends entirely on the maker. When you commission a maker, they'll usually get you to agree to a Terms of Service, or a TOS, before things get started. In that TOS, it should stipulate what the conditions are regarding changes, so make sure you read that TOS! 
most makers are happy to correct mistakes that were on their part, like if they missed a marking on your reference sheet or got a colour wrong. As for fit issues, that one does get a lot harder because it's really difficult to determine whether or not it actually was a fault of the maker or it was on you because you didn't do your DTD and your measurements properly. Either way, as long as you are kind, respectful and upfront with your maker about any problems, they should be happy to work with you towards a solution. Worst case, you might just have to fork out some extra cash for postage, materials and time, but yeah, it is entirely dependent on the situation and that maker's TOS. From Sherp the Wicker Beast. Hi Pakari, do you have any updates on Scraggle? Nope. From Grace Otter. Hi, if Pakari wasn't a kangaroo, what sort of species do you think he would be? And then we also have from Cursed Tubby, if Pakari wasn't based on Pakari sweat, what would he be based on? I thought it would be fun to answer both of these at once. Species wise, he'd probably actually be a husky. Cause at the time, most of my characters were canines and huskies were my favorite kind of dog. And if he wasn't based on Pakari sweat, he would have been based off my other favorite drink at the time, which was Copperberg Mixed Fruit Cider. So somewhere out there in an alternate universe, you are not watching a Pakari Roo video right now, but you are actually watching a Copper Husky video. <laughs> I thought it would be fun to draw what he might look like. <laughs> and with that, we have reached the end of another Q&A. Please do leave me some more questions in the hopefully still enabled comments below. I, I swear to God, if YouTube touches them again, I'm going to be doing some some very angry backflips. So yeah, hopefully, please do leave them for me in the comments below <laughs> with the hashtag Q&A so then I can find them. Or feel free to come and join the Discord. To get the Discord link, you gotta come to the streams, which is at twitch.tv slash Bakari Saturday. Thank you so much for watching. I super duper 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 appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next one. Stay safe, stay awesome. Catch you then. Bye. This month's anniversary shout outs go to Lisa, who has been here for four years. Thank you so much. And then for three years, we've got Rufin, Jalen Fourth, Beat It, and Koi Nukaska. For two years, we've got Guhi, Beta Gadgets, The Foxy Rider. And for one year, we've got Missy Metcalf, Pops Anon, Blitz Disabler, Tannison's, Auto the Dragon, Nick Neely, Cora Twin Tails, and Tyler Bain. Thank you guys so much.